Japan is known for its vibrant pop culture, especially J-pop, the genre of music that features idol groups with catchy songs and synchronized dance moves. But behind the glittering stage, there is a dark and disturbing secret that has haunted many young male idols for decades. He started to massage my feet. He took off my underwear and touched my genitals. He then performed oral sex on me. It involves Johnny Kitagawa, the founder and head of Johnny & Associates, the most influential talent agency in Japan. He was accused of abusing his power and exploiting his trainees in exchange for fame and fortune. This is the story of how he got away with it. In 2017, popular idol Tatsuya Yamaguchi from Tokyo was arrested for kissing a high school girl without her consent at his home. He admitted his guilt and apologized publicly, but was later sued by the girl's family for damages. He also left the agency. The Rise of Johnny and Associates Johnny Kitagawa was born in Los Angeles in 1931 and moved to Japan in 1956 to work at the US Embassy. He became interested in music and entertainment and started coaching a baseball team of four teenage boys in Yoyogi Park. He invited them to his house to watch West Side Story, which inspired them to form a singing and dancing group called Johnny's. They became the first all-male pop group in Japan and made history with their innovative style and performance. Kitagawa founded Johnny and Associates in 1962 and began scouting and training young boys to become idols. He had a formula that worked. He would hold auditions and provide dormitories and education, teach them singing and dancing, arrange TV shows and concerts, and produce records. He created some of the most popular groups in Japan, such as Four Leaves, Smap, Cat Tun, Heisei Jump, and many others. He also coined the term Johnny's, which became a generic name for any male idol under his agency. The Allegations Against Johnny Kitagawa However, Kitagawa was also notorious for being secretive and controlling. He rarely appeared in public or allowed photos of himself or his idols. He also forbade his idols from talking about their personal lives or dating anyone. He wanted them to maintain a pure and innocent image to appeal to young female fans. Behind closed doors, Kitagawa was accused of hurting his trainees for years. The allegations first surfaced in the 1990s, when several former idols published books or gave interviews about their experiences with him. They claimed that Kitagawa would touch them inappropriately, force himself on them, or offer them money or gifts in exchange for favors. They said that they endured this because they feared losing their chance to debut or disappointing their bandmates. In 1999, Shukan Bunshin, one of Japan's largest magazines, published a series of articles exposing Kitagawa's misconduct. They interviewed dozens of victims who shared their stories and evidence. They also revealed that Kitagawa had connections with powerful people in the media and politics who helped him cover up his crimes. Kitagawa denied the allegations and sued the magazine for libel. In 2002, the court ruled that some of the accusations were true, but some were false or exaggerated. The court ordered the magazine to pay damages to Kitagawa, but also ordered Kitagawa to pay damages to some of the victims. The Supreme Court upheld this decision in 2004. However, Kitagawa never faced criminal charges because the statute of limitations had expired. He also never lost his influence or popularity in the industry. His idols continued to support him and perform at his tribute concert after he died in 2019 at age 87. The Aftermath and Impact Kitagawa's legacy is still controversial and divisive. Some people praise him as a visionary who revolutionized Japanese pop culture and created many stars. Some people condemn him as a predator who exploited and traumatized many young boys and corrupted the entertainment industry. The victims of Kitagawa have different reactions as well. 
Some have spoken out against him and sought justice or healing. Some have remained silent or retracted their statements out of fear or loyalty. Some have expressed gratitude or love for him, despite what he did to them. Kitagawa's case also raises questions about the idol system and culture in Japan and other Asian countries. How can young talent be protected from abuse and exploitation? How can fans be more aware and critical of the image and reality of their idols? How can society change its attitude and response to violence? These are some of the issues that have been explored by journalists, activists, and filmmakers who have investigated Kitagawa's scandal. For example, the BBC recently aired a documentary titled Predator, The Secret Scandal of J-Pop, that features interviews with former trainees and experts on the topic. But there are also other stories that are related to Kitagawa's scandal that you may not know about. For example, in 2013, one of Kitagawa's most famous idols, Jin Akanishi from Katun, was punished by the agency for secretly marrying actress Meisha Kuroki without their permission. He was banned from performing or releasing music for six months, lost millions of dollars in contracts, and eventually left the agency. In 2017, another popular idol, Tatsuya Yamaguchi from Tokyo, was arrested for kissing a high school girl without her consent at his home. He admitted his guilt and apologized publicly, but was later sued by the girl's family for damages. He also left the agency. In 2019, one of Kitagawa's successors, Masahiko Kondo from Machi and Question, was suspended by the agency for having an affair with a married woman. He was accused of breaking the agency's code of conduct and damaging its reputation. These stories show that even after Kitagawa's death, his agency still has a lot of power and influence over its idols' lives and careers. They also show that there are still problems with consent and respect in the industry. So what do you think about Johnny Kitagawa's scandal? Do you think he should have faced more consequences for his actions? Do you think his agency should change its policies and practices? Do you think his idols deserve more freedom and protection? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.